We captured footage of a pregnant woman who her son was being arrested and she was grabbed and slammed against the floor while she was six months pregnant. Now we've gotten footage of street vendors who are selling fruits and vegetables along Fifth Avenue. At five o'clock, there was an the end of a festival and the police shut it down at 505. These vendors were slammed to the floor while in handcuffs, kicked around, beat up. 16-year-old girl choked by, by the captain of the precinct. All of this on video. And these are the things that, you know, that happen a lot, you know? And if we're not there capturing it, people just won't believe that it happens, that it's going on. But it's in, in this city, it's going on every day. When I was younger, as a Latino, you know, young kid, teenager, pe people didn't believe you when, when you had a certain encounter with the police. Whether it was your parents, whether it was your teachers, you know, no one in power believed young people and what we went through, oh, cops are not that bad, uh, you know. But it, it really was until we started getting our hands on cameras and turning them on when the cops approached us to, to show, you know, what that looked like, what that felt like. You know, the first people to have to pave the way, you know, as far as in, in, in this cop watch movement, you know, we took a lot of hits. October 2002, I was a teaching artist for W.E.B. Du Bois High School. And I, after school, I witnessed the police manhandling a teenager at the subway station. And I decided to grab a payphone, dial 911, and pull out a, a point and shoot digital camera and start taking pictures from 20 feet away in front of a token booth where the public was watching as the cops were slapping this kid around. As I was on the phone talking to the operator, describing what the cops looked like, cops walked up to me while I was on the payphone and maced me. As they took possession of the camera and handcuffed me, they all slammed me to the floor, piled up on top of me, and one officer cracked my head open with his walkie-talkie. Uh, they stomped on my handcuffs that were, you know, behind my back, my arms. I got permanent dam nerve damage on my fingers um, and a big gash to the top of my head and I was sprayed with mace. I was taken to jail and charged with assaulting police, with obstruction of governmental administration and a list of other bogus crimes that it took a year for them to dismiss. When I filed a complaint, police were we were attempting to intimidate me. They would show up to my house. There would be a, a, an unmarked police car parked in front of my house. They would show up at my job. They would go to my mother's job and they would just follow us around. I want themselves to be visible, want, wanting me to, to notice them. And they would wave at me and they would drive by me. And, and that was an intimidation tactic. What I decided to do was get my friends to come with me have multiple cameras. So I would have someone across the street on one angle, somebody on another angle, you know, a chain of cameras watching over each other. As I would walk up to the park, unmarked car, and knock on their window with the camera on and ask them, officer, can you identify yourself? How come you've been parked in front of my house for this whole entire week? The cops would, you know, roll their windows up and drive away. It was that experience that got me to see that I needed to organize with, with a group of people, with multiple cameras, where we watch over each other. We don't interfere, we don't obstruct. We're there to document, observe, and collect evidence as to what happened. They're putting body cams on police officers and you know, they already set up the rules to make sure that the public will not have access to this footage. So there's a camera that you know, is worn on his body on the chest and it points outward. So it's not recording the cop, it's not recording the, the police officer's you know, expressions, words or whatever, it's recording what they're collecting of the public. So that's why our cameras are recording them. We need to document what they're doing you know, and what's happening in the scene. In Sunset Park, there are NYPD surveillance cameras already 
lined up through the poles on the busiest avenues in this neighborhood. And there's been a history of incidents that have happened with the police right underneath those cameras. I myself have taken out FOIL requests, applied for FOIL requests for the police department to release this footage. We recorded our version, and there's an unedited version recorded somewhere that the police has access to. And people have been arrested, people have been assaulted, they've gone to court, lawyers have re subpoenaed the, this footage, and the police have never released this. You know, so, so this is evidence that exists that the police department, the city of New York, uh, purposely withhold. We've been able to use our cameras and our videos as evidence to get charges dropped, to be put in as evidence, to, you know what I'm saying, to protect people. He didn't do that. He didn't do that. I got your camera.